Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at overriding lookup methods on existing forms. In the past, I've shown you how to implement a lookup method on a form control in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. I've also shown you how you can override a lookup to either add additional columns or uh, look at a subset of records. Well, this is taking it a little bit f further. Um, if you have a base Microsoft form or even just a form that's in another model as your own and you want to change what the lookup functionality does, um, this video is for you. you. This video will apply to more than just lookup methods. It applies to other form control uh, methods as well. Uh, I think this is a really useful trick that's not um, super well well known. So here we go. Um, in my example, I've gone into the all customers form in D365 and I've just selected the first customer record to go into the customer details form. This is the cus table form um, as found in the application explorer. So I'm going to look at this customer group drop down. When I click this drop down right now, I actually get to see the customer group ID as well as a description of the customer group. So just for fun, let's pretend we want to override this lookup and actually display an additional column such as the payment terms when we click this lookup. This same concept can be used for any lookup throughout the system. This was just one example that I decided to show. You could do the same thing uh, for like an item ID drop down on a sales line or something else on a sales order um, if you wanted as well. Okay, so there's really two ways that we can override this lookup on an existing form. We can use either a form handler or we can use chain of command. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you both ways, um, just in case you have maybe a personal preference. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up the cust table from the application explorer. Once I find it um, and I find that form, I can right click and say open designer to open it in this front panel here. This is my form designer. The next thing that I need to do is I need to find the control whose lookup that I want to override. Um, I could scroll through each of the different nodes if I know how to navigate this tree and find where the customer group is. Or the easiest way is actually if you use this preview pane in Visual Studio, you can actually just click on the form control and then Visual Studio will automatically select it for you in the design pane. This is really nice. The next thing that I need to do is I actually need to expand this form control and then expand events. In this case, we're looking at a, uh, a form handler, an event handler for uh, the lookup. Okay, then I need to select this on lookup event handler and I can right click and say copy event handler method. What this is going to do is it's going to allow Visual Studio to generate the code and put in my clipboard for me. I don't have to do it this way. If I know the syntax and can type it by hand, I could do that. Um, but this is just really nice. So we'll click copy event handler. The next thing we need to do is create a new class. So if you haven't already first create a solution and project. You can do that um, by going up to the top menu, saying file, new project, and giving your project a name um, and making sure that you've got finance and operations selected. Once you've got your project selected, you can right click on the project and either say add new item and select the class type or you can just uh, use this shortcut and say add class to create a new class. I'm assuming you know how to do all that, so I'm going a little faster here. Um, so I've gone ahead and already created a new class, and I've named the class tutorial cus table underscore form underscore handler to indicate that it's a form handler. 
then what I can do is I can paste in my form handler code that I got from copying um, it from, from the form design itself. So it will look like this. I've actually already done that here. I had just commented out my code. So I'm gonna uncomment my code. Not all of it. Um, uncomment just this part of the code. And I'll go ahead and delete what I pasted here. What I pasted was really just this form uh, definition and this attribute that tells the system to um, register this lookup method to this control. Um, if you're unfamiliar with this, uh, you can watch some of uh, the other articles or videos where we talk about the, these attributes. But now that we have our lookup method, we can add our lookup code. So specifically, common lookup code is to use this sysTable lookup class. I can pass in the form control object um, for, for this object. And then in my case, I don't need to filter any records. I'm just going to add three columns instead of the normal two. So I'm going to add cus group, which is the customer group ID. Name is actually the name of the field that is labeled description. And then I'm going to add this PAME term ID. And then I'm going to run the lookup, perform lookup. However, if I had just added this code and no more code, I, and I tried to compile and run it, it would uh, provide an error when I run it, and it would say more than one lookup form is running at the same time. This is because the base existing lookup is also going to try to run along with this one. So I need code that tells that existing lookup form to not show. The way I do that is I create this cancelable super event args object. Uh, and I can do that from this little E variable that's being passed into um, this method for us. Then I call this special method called cancel super call. Um, if you're familiar with X++, super refers to the base method on a class. So it's calling the parent methods class. In this case, the parent method is also a lookup. Um, so we want that code to not run. So I need to call these two lines of code um, to make it so only my code runs. If I then build and compile this and then reload my page, we should see that all three columns are displaying on our lookup. Now that I've reloaded my form in my browser, I can click the edit button and then click the drop down next to the customer group control. And sure enough, I'm now seeing three columns instead of two. I see my terms of payment. Awesome. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.